Yesterday, Jim Griffin and I filed a motion for Judge Clifton Newman to hold a hearing to order the state prosecutor in Alex's murder case to comply with the law requiring them to give us the evidence in this case. Both the constitutions of the, United, of the state of South Carolina and the United States prohibit trial by ambush. The law requires the state to make this evidence available to us within 30 days of our request. The 30 days is not a minimum, it's the maximum. You would assume most, if not all, this material was available 32 days ago when we requested it. You would assume the state knew when they presented indictments for murder, we would immediately request the evidence. And you would assume they would have made it available a month ago so we could evaluate the quality and quantity of it and begin to hire experts, interview witnesses, and examine any physical items they will try to introduce into evidence. This is the process that occurs every day in every county of South Carolina wherever a criminal case is pending. The state has agreed to try this case in January. Every day that passes makes it more difficult for Alec Murdaugh and his attorneys to get prepared for trial. This motion we filed yesterday outlines our position more fully. We're asking Judge Newman to order these materials turned over to us immediately without delay. I will comment on procedural aspects of this matter, but not on any substantive evidentiary issue. Questions? Senator, yeah. you wanted a gag order just weeks ago. What was the change in part to hold this press conference today and address the media on this? We didn't get a gag order. I mean, the judge said, not going to gag you. We're not going to seal anything. Everything's out in the open. Well, if it's out in the open, those are the rules. We're going to play by the rules. Um, and, and I might further point this out. As you see in the motion, there's been a exchange of emails rather than motions made. And, and let me get a little technical. Rule 5 of the South Carolina Rules of Criminal Procedure, once we make that motion, our guys indicted, we make a motion, they have 30 days maximum to give us the stuff. On last Friday, almost at 5 o'clock, we get an email from the prosecutor telling us he wants some sort of order that would seal everything, basically, which we believe is inconsistent with Judge Newman's denial of the gag order. We tried to tweak it a little bit, and finally just said no. Statewide grand jury law requires certain sealing and certain procedural requirements to, 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 to make that public. This is not, this is, information was gathered by the statewide grand jury, but this is a case pending in state court in Colleton County. Those rules don't apply. There was no reason, as I point out, they couldn't have turned all, almost all of this over to us 32 days ago. There's still two days late. Now, Judge Newman uh, uh, issued, uh, sent an email this morning asking uh, that an order be drafted um, unsealing items. That's great. A number of the search warrants in this case had sealed affidavits. Now, sealed affidavits, I shouldn't have to explain to any of you, because if you turn on the news right now, they're talking about sealed affidavits on a certain search warrant in Florida. The question is, after the indictment is brought, should they still be sealed? And the answer is no. So 32 days ago, they could have made a motion to unseal the search warrants. They didn't do it. So it is, I've been doing this almost half a century as a prosecutor and as a defense attorney. This conduct is unprecedented, unprecedented. They're hiding the ball. I'll give you an example, perhaps why. We had a call after uh, we had this inability to reach some agreement from the family, Alex's family. They indicated Sweat had contacted them and wanted to review some evidence and would come by next week to do that. They wanted to get to them before we could talk to them, before we could see the evidence, which, which would indicate to me they didn't expect to give us the evidence until next week. They get a call this morning saying, can we come by this afternoon? I mean, this is, this is, this is again, gotcha prosecution. It's trial by ambush. Give us the stuff. You went to a grand jury and said you've got enough evidence to convict Alec Murdaugh, convince a jury beyond a reasonable doubt. Where is it? I don't have a shred of paper. I don't have an email. I don't have an exhibit. I don't have any evidence. We want to try this case in January. 
They've agreed to try this case in January. We're ready to work, ready to hire investigators, ready to hire experts. I mean, if all we know, I mean, somebody wants to know blood spatter. All I know about blood splatter is what I read in some blog. I, I've never seen any blood spatter evidence. I've never seen any phone downloads. I've never seen any witness statements. 32 days after we make the request, we still don't have anything. So they want to obscure this by saying, well, you know, we need to get this sealed or this needs to be protected. We don't want uh, 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 crime scene photos left out on tables. That is hooey. That is, again, this happens every day in every county, in every murder case. Uh, Mr. Herculean, uh, in the motion, it, it says, uh, you claim that the Attorney General's Office leaked the information about the indictment two days before the first time of the hearing of this. How did you, or what evidence do you have that, that proves that it was the state leaking that information? That's what Swed told the family. The family wanted to know why they were reading about it in the paper before they heard about it. And Swed agents with them said the Attorney General's Office had leaked it. The Murdoch family, yes. That would be uh, his brothers, um, his sister, and of course Maggie's family. Every day that goes by without this discovery, what does it mean to your case? And is there a possibility this could push past January? We will try this case in January, come hell or high water. Ride by here at 11 or 12 o'clock at night, you're going to see the lights on. We're not going to let this slip by because they're dragging their feet. What advantage do they get from dragging their feet? Why, why do you think they're doing this? To make it more difficult for us to be, uh, look, let's say for the sake of argument, there are, uh, they've done um, geofencing, which is a, a word I've learned recently with cell phones. We have to hire a geofencing expert. They're not easy to find. We have to get the information from them, from the state, give it to them, have them analyze it, and that can't happen overnight. So the longer they take to give it to us, the longer it's going to take for us to get prepared. And it seems like the dispute is mostly around uh, evidence from search warrants that are out and whether that should be subject to some sort of protective order. Well, two things. One, those search warrants, these are non-statewide grand jury search warrants, where what, the one we've seen says, sua sponte ordered sealed by the judge. That means the judge just said, I'm sealing it. And that would have been Judge Newman, which, of course, means that the prosecutors and the judge had a conversation ex parte, which they're allowed to do, to issue a search warrant. But why was it sealed? What was, we need to get to the bottom of that. What was in that search warrant? I mean, you know, again, I'm comparing maybe what's going on in Florida. Everybody wants to know what was in that search warrant. We want to know what was in that affidavit. And apparently, uh, they're going to make an effort. The judge indicated a little while ago by email to draft something that would unseal uh, those search warrants. So we'll get to see that. But the search warrants are a very tiny piece. There's all kinds of other stuff. There's the cell phone data. There's um, uh, data uh, from uh, the black box of his truck. There's um, you know, forensics. Uh, we've never seen an autopsy. We've never seen you know, an analysis of time of death. We've never seen any of the sorts of basic things you'd want to know in a murder case. There's, the search warrants are 5%. 95% could have been given to us 32 days ago. Why not? They're concerned about, you know, crime scene photos left on a, on a table somewhere. I mean, that really is it. And uh, earlier you requested a trial by October or November. Now you guys are saying January 64. I wanted October. They said they couldn't there do it. There hasn't been any decision on that? Or? No, we've asked, we've written, it, and we've attached to the motion, we've written a letter to the um, court administration asking a judge and a date be set in January. Will there be a hearing on the motion we just filed? We asked for one. Do you know when that might be? We've asked for one. You want it as soon as possible? Want it as soon as possible. I want the stuff. I want. The hearing's important, but what's more important is we get somebody giving us some evidence we begin to look at. Senator, what, uh, what percentage do you think you're missing? A hundred percent. A hundred percent? We have nothing. Zero. Zero. Nada. Senator, uh, has the state indicated to you whether or not they're going to be going to the death penalty in this case? They have not indicated. Would you expect that? 
You know, I've prosecuted or defended 15 death penalty cases. I've never seen it. This is a circumstantial evidence case, as far as we know. Again, based on what we know, which is 100 percent we don't know. Um, anyone that would seek the death penalty in a circumstantial evidence case uh, would not be knowing what they're doing, um, because a jury's not going to give the death penalty on a circumstantial evidence case. And I've tried it. <laughs> I know it doesn't work. You mentioned that someone requested a meeting with you this afternoon. Uh, who was that? Sled or the AG's office? And not with me, okay. with the family. And, and what, what what do you expect them to disclose at that meeting? Since I don't know any of the evidence, I don't know. And that's Sled that requested that meeting. Sled requested that meeting. It's going to be next week. Now it's moved up to this afternoon. Did you change the venue on the table? Not for me. I want to pick a Carlton County jury. I, I believe we can get a fair trial in Carlton County. Are you confident you're going to get the evidence that you need and if they don't give you everything, how do you proceed from there? Well, look, this ain't my first rodeo. They're not going to give us everything. We're going to have to go back to court. We're going to have to first, I mean, what becomes obvious when you look at the stuff is they've redacted something or there's a gap or we know they interviewed Joe Smith, but there's no interview notes of Joe Smith. We'll figure it out. We just got a lot of work ahead of us. Um, and we can't start working until we get the material. Who is responsible for not turning it over to you? Chief Keel, Alan Wilson, Creighton Waters, who? Well, Creighton Waters is the prosecutor. Ultimately, he's the, the front, man, front man. I don't know. I, I mean, it's not Keel's decision. And um, I don't know. I mean, as far as I know, um, Alan Wilson's never prosecuted a case, so I doubt it's him. What's Alan your... Wilson's never prosecuted a case? A murder case? No. What's your understanding of the volume of the evidence we're talking about here? I don't know. You haven't been told it's... I haven't been pages. told whether it's three pages or three million pages. Senator Hartfield, if this continues to be delayed, I mean, does January become an unreasonable target? We're going to get the evidence in time to get ready for January if we have to file an appeal to the South Carolina Supreme Court. This case needs to be resolved, not just for Alec Murdoch, but for the judicial system. For the state of South Carolina, we need to put this behind us and move on. Um, well, if I mean people keep leaking stuff, yes. That's not true, yes. Even if it is true, but we're you know that's why you have voir dire. That's why you you scrutinize jurors. Look, I've tried in my lifetime hundreds of criminal cases prosecuted and defended. I have full faith in our judicial system. I mean, I have, and, and, and when I say that, this isn't some sort of patriotic wave the flag. I've seen it work. I've seen it work. And I've seen it work in wonderful ways. We just need to play by the rules. If you follow the rules, look, his job is to see that justice is done, not to convict somebody. My job is to represent my client. People say to me, how can you represent this guy? John Adams, the second president of the United States, represented the British soldiers who massacred the colonial protesters on the Boston Commons. Four were acquitted, two were hung. It is my duty to do that. It's what keeps this country free. Abraham Lincoln defended 22 murder cases. It's this whole idea that, I don't, do they not teach civics in high school anymore? I just don't get it. Well, I mean, you always have doubts, but I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that happens. And if we feel like that he can't get a fair trial, we'll make the appropriate motions. You've obviously been in touch with the Murdoch family, and they're going to have a meeting later today. Um, can you talk at all to their reaction, their mood? I mean, they're reading stuff in the press, they're hearing from you, they're hearing from SLED. No. Anything else? You said uh, you'd make the appropriate motion if you don't think you can get a fair trial. What would that be? I don't know. I mean, there are motions that you can, it depends on what the issue is. A change Look, of venue? Could be, could be a number of different things. You could sequester the jury. You could do all kinds of things. But th the point is this. You're asking me what my strategy is in the fourth quarter. And we haven't even taken the field yet. 
okay? I mean, because we're not allowed on the field. I can't begin to think about any strategy until I know what the evidence is or what they say the evidence is. And that's got to be scrubbed. Just because they say it's the evidence doesn't mean it's the evidence. Uh, and, and, and i got to say this to you. As I said, I've been doing this a long time. The interest in this case is unprecedented. And it's unprecedented because of y'all. And let me just make a little side comment here about y'all. A.J. Liebling, the famous press critic, once said, freedom of the press is guaranteed only to those who own one. And that used to mean that you had to own a press. Now all you have to own is one of these. And now you're all press. And some of y'all are good, some of y'all professional, and some of y'all are not. So I gotta treat all y'all to some extent like you're not. Any other questions? How is Mr. Murdo holding up through this? He's fine. Do you anticipate that Judge uh, Newman. Newman, Newman, sorry, I was going to say, well, Judge Newman is going to be the presiding judge in this case? I have no idea. I mean, it, that's not my decision. That's a decision made by the Chief Justice. Call him. Ma'am. No, no, but I ha no, I not a press conference, but I have uh, had to file very um, extraordinary motions to get discovery. I feel like there's a line in the sand here right now because time is running out. As you said, there's a 30 day that sort of runs out this week. What happened? Ran out Monday. On Monday, okay. So what happens now? File a motion. Okay. Which is what we did. The only reason I'm having the press conference is to explain that motion. I'm not talking about evidence. I'm not talking about merits. I'm talking about making sure you understand that we don't have what we were supposed to have. And it doesn't look like we're going to get it immediately. Um, and we've asked for a, a hearing in front of the judge as quickly as possible. We believe Judge Newman will order them to give it to us without any, I don't know how he orders protective orders on stuff that in any other case would never have a protective order. And there's a specific Rule 5D of, of Rule 5, 5D1, that allows them to say, Judge, we'd like a protective order on this piece of evidence because, and then we can argue about that. They didn't do that. They've never filed a motion. Never filed a motion. They send proposed orders. Senator, you want to join the civil